1.6 part 3. Okay, Gestalt Unity. So it's a German word, very popular with um, art critiques, as I started to mention. I might have cut some of that off because um, I got tongue-tied <laughs> like I stopped the video. Okay, so this is something that the whole seems greater than some parts. You know, like when um, a movie works in so many ways, like you go to the movie and it's visually beautiful, it's making really sense, it's well done, it's ordered, and, and um, the story's making sense. But the acting just happens to be really good, and the directing's good, and the writing's good. All that stuff's coming together, and you're having a really fantastic experience. Now, sometimes all those things are perfect, and you don't have a good experience. So Gestalt is sort of that in-between thing of where everything is hitting on all cylinders, as it were, and it's working, and you're enjoying it, and you're getting a great sense of... Um, expression from it. I won't say joy because joy is a mood or a quality of experience and what I'm trying to say is it's it can be other experiences but you're getting uh, the gestalt is all of the stuff about the artwork is really great but you're getting more than that from it if that makes sense okay so it combines to create a gestalt so there's a good interactive exercise, but we're going to look at Vishnu dreaming the universe. And this, it, I really want you to go back and look at the book on this because this is written really beautifully and I don't want to butcher it too badly because I'm trying to make this quick. But he is dreaming the universe here, Vishnu is, and all these people in um, that we see, uh, he's sheltered by the great serpent, but all these people he, he sees sleeping on the cosmic sea and how the universe is reborn over and over into eternity. Um, we're seeing multiple figures, you know, being re reborn. And um, Shiva's riding a bull on here, um, over here, I believe. Oh, over here, sorry. And um, the unity of the male and female creates a partnership that res results in the birth of new universe and many other universes into it in eternity. Now, there's more here in the book, and Indian art is really fantastic. I took it at Cal State Long Beach years ago, loved it, and I went to India, just absolutely love this work. But at any rate, um, part of the unity that's going on here, that the male and female powers, and sometimes you see actual sex imagery or imagery of a uh, sexual organs without the bodies in Indian artwork, and the idea is that the male and female coming together makes all this creativity so or or makes the universe keep multiplying so we're seeing multiple figures and we're seeing a lot of repetitive um motifs here in terms of the way the figures are moving and the way they're dressed their movements and so on um but also the concept of birth and rebirth is here as well so it's got conceptual unity visual unity and it has a gestalt in that the visuals are matching um, some of the concepts. All right. We're going to get into variety. Okay. Variety is a collection of ideas, elements, or materials that are fused together in one design and can invigorate a design. Uh, we're going to start with Rauschenberg here, one of my all-time favorites. He has a huge piece. Or by the time you're watching this video, it will be gone. <clears throat> a quarter mile long, excuse me, at uh, LA County Museum of Art. It'll probably be shown again. I know it'll be shown again, shown again, but I don't know when. So this piece has some unity. If you look at the coloration, it's kind of got some neutral tones in here. But it has a lot of variety, okay? It's kind of a painting, flat sort of a thing. But it's also got a uh, an animal that's been stuffed, a taxidermy animal, a goat. And it's got a tire. What do a goat and a tire have to do with one another? To be totally honest with you, nothing. And after this piece was made, um, when people would see these sort of motifs in artwork, because <coughs> Rauschenberg uses a lot of detritus. These are old signs and um, like an old flat tire that he found. And I don't know where the goat came from. But he uses a lot of things that are discards. 
Um, he's doing what Cornell, we were looking at the box, he's doing similar things to that. He also did some boxes for a while, but mostly he's coming from abstract expressionist painting with just broad areas of color, and then he starts getting into this mixed media stuff. He's kind of where mixed media begins, and pe some people will say he did it best, and no one's done it as well since. I might be one of those people. Okay, so he's branding himself as a symbol, as a, as a, a, as a rebel and an outcast. He's using this ancient symbol of male lust and a Christian symbol of souls cast out from salvation as part of his um, being rebellious here, or being his sort of like um, not giving you a painting, not giving you a sculpture. He's calling it a combine painting. So he's kind of messing around here. So he's giving us some variety. He's uh, sort of... Mm, I'm going to leave that open. So he's challenging things. That's a good word. Okay, so using variety to unify. Now here's now where we're going to get tricky. An artist can create visual harmony while using a variety of different shapes, colors, values, and other elements. Lovely example. So this album quilt, okay, at first glance, if we were to get further away from this, if it was tiny and small, we would maybe say, okay, this has unity and I don't get the variety. But as you get closer to it, you see that these reads even that these um, combined um, branches are not the same in any case. They're all different. They're all like that one's heart shaped slightly. And then these bouquets are different. So there's a lot of variety. But where's our unifying element, right? Where's our unifying principle rather? I don't want to get confused. I, I meant segment. It's, I get into it too. I, I make mistakes. But our unifying principle here, if you look at this, and remember how I said I'm partial to a grid, there's this beautiful grid going on in the negative space with this beige material here, okay? So we have multiple leaves and flowers and even some animals. If you look here, there's some birds. A lot of types of different things, but because it's in this grid, we have a sense of unity. So this is variety with unity. Okay, balance. That's our last principle here. Now, a lot of um, cultures really revere balance, meaning everything's organized and it, it's equal on either sides and it's uh, visually balanced. And you can see the two halves. So when we get into symmetrical balance, um, that is mainly what I'm talking about. Symmetry, it's exactly cut in half. It looks the same on either side. The human body, animal, uh, all kinds of geometric shapes. Um, the piece that we're going to look at is a ritual um, container from China. Um, this is from 1600 to 1000 BCE. So this is a 3000, almost 4000 year old piece. And if you cut this down the middle, now this is called radial, no, I beg your pardon. This is called vertical um, balance and it's symmetrical okay um, so it's going down the middle if you're cutting it down the middle then you have a sense of um, vertical balance now it could be this way uh, a different type of artwork might go that way this one does not this is one goes this way okay because we cut it this way the feet would be different than the handles if that makes sense but if we cut this this way the same shapes are on this side as are on that side. So it is symmetrical. It is balanced. Okay. So um, asymmetrical balance is another option. Sometimes things are weighted more heavily on one side than the other. In this particular piece, um, another Chinese piece, we're seeing in the um, Song Dynasty, but it's also to do with the ink painting. Sometimes ink drawing um, on silk is done very differently. There's this open space over here. So if you cut this down this way, it is not balanced, right? It is asymmetrical. It's very heavy over here. Lots of activity, lots of objects. Over here, there's almost nothing, okay? So this is our asymmetrical example heaviness on the left side. Then we look at the Taj Mahal. Now this has both uh, 
symmetrical balance and radial balance. Okay, so if you look at it down from the bottom, the, the radial balance means coming from the center that it's going to be the same on all sides. It's going to radiate from the center. That's the best way I can explain it. But it has radial balance. So this is the tomb of Mumtaz Mahal. And love and perfection um, have to do with the symmetry, and that's why it has to have that um, bilateral and radial symmetry. Okay. Um, the the I was going to call it the floor plan. I beg your pardon. The overall plan of the garden is also symmetrical. This is really beautiful. You ever get the chance to go here? I highly recommend it. I went when I was in my twenties. It was so fantastic. So this is the Taj Mahal here. This is the garden that we're looking at here. We can't really see that um, the uh, pool going that way, but it's radial balanced here. We're looking right here at um, the south gate. So the south gate is a different building than this. Of course, there's only one Taj Mahal, but I will tell you something. It's white. We'll go back. Beautiful white marble and it's infested with bees or hornets, I'm not sure which, but up in those alcoves it's infested with bees, you gotta be careful. Okay, so there was only one, that's for the for uh, Mumtaz. Now across the across the way, the the um, emperor was going to make a have a black one made for him, but his kids decided to keep the money and not build the tomb. Isn't that terrible? But we have the beautiful Taj Mahal, and it has radial balance, radial symmetry. Okay, read a little bit more on that. Another radial symmetrical piece, but I'm going to leave you there.